Uh, this is the Mad Alchemist again, back in the safety of the bat tent. You saw some of my videos earlier, I was being eaten by mosquitoes. And so, mosquitoes bat, for me. Anyways, uh, one of the two shorter versions of the videos I wanted to make earlier is why I don't drink water in front of Muslims during Ramadan. And basically, the short version is it's not making anything easier, they're not going away, and we need to help them integrate better, faster, etc. Uh, the example I like to give is, I went to boot camp, I was in the Navy, etc. Boot camp, not easy. Uh, I smoke cigarettes now, but more socially, I've cut back a lot. Uh, but back then, I was like a normal smoker, you know, smoke a pack a day, whatever. And, uh, you know, some people would stand on the corner, it, knowing we would march past them as little recruits, uh, smoking cigarettes, knowing we're like, we really want a cigarette, and they were just making things harder. Yes. Uh, the Navy is not compulsory anymore, uh, but I like to think that a lot of us joined the military because we wanted to make the world better, you know, serve our country, etc. And there was many things that I was able to do in the military that I feel, feel very proud about. Um, I was able to help out after Hurricane Katrina and Rita, like right afterwards, like we had to leave for Rita and then come back. Uh, and that was very satisfying. Um, <clears throat> we were able to shop. Uh, also, uh, a lot of my time was on a marine transport sitting off the east coast of Africa, stopping weapon shipments coming from China going to extremist groups in Africa. Um, so yeah, it wasn't compulsory, but we were trying to, we were recruits. We, we, want, we wanted to make the world better. And those people standing on the corner smoking cigarettes to make us feel even more powerless over our lives weren't helping things and you could go oh well you know being a muslim isn't compulsory but in many cases it kind of can be or it's very expensive to stop being muslim uh even in some places like Kissimmee, florida where i am right now and so if a muslim wants to leave islam and they want to be a non-religious person they're like well you know what religion doesn't make sense there, there's there's no evidence to support it. There's all kinds of reasons to say why religion is hurtful to people. I want to. I, I want to leave this thing. Um, they very much risk uh, losing their livelihoods, their homes, definitely their families and communities, and possibly their children. Uh, yes, there's been a number of cases, uh, court cases, where a parent, after a divorce, lost custody of their children because one of the, the parent was non-religious. The one that really comes to mind was uh, the court, the judge ordered the woman to go to these uh, parenting counseling meetings and the counselor kept trying to introduce religion into it, prayer. And she was like, you know what, I'm not going to pray to your, your mystical sky fairy. Uh, it doesn't do anything. So that's not being cooperative. So she gets marks for not being co cooperative in these uh, you know, counseling sessions, eventually she leaves and, and protest, and she loses, loses custody of her children. So I don't know what these people would be required to lose in order to give up Islam. I mean, if it's a guy, um, he's probably going to lose custody of his children. Uh, he doesn't have a framework to, to provide uh, a, a good upbringing to these children from the view of the courts. And women are much more likely not as much as it used to be, but they're more likely to be able to maintain custody of their children. But living in Kissimmee, Florida, and a lot of these immigrants, especially women, are not skilled workers. So that's going to mean working two part-time jobs, living out of a hotel room with no benefits. Who wants that for their children? No mother is going to, uh, any mother is going to seriously, seriously say, well, what, what, are, what are the options here? And none of the options are good. Um... So maybe these people are trying to leave Islam. Uh, you don't know that. I don't know that. And uh, really, you know, making them feel worse, uh, uh, especially Muslims, that they're already pretty powerless over their own lives, especially women and children. And, and just really pointing out to them how powerless they are over their lives. Like, hey, look, I can drink some water. You can't. And that's not helping anything. I mean, they're not going to go away. Making them feel uncomfortable is not going to make them go away. I mean, but on an individual basis, you and me and this person who's standing in front of you, 
um, really making them more miserable is not helping anything. Um, they're not going away. Let's let's help them integrate as as quickly as possible and. Maybe we won't have this two to three generations before their uh, normal, productive, not being anti-social people um, by really, you know, building those bridges and making someone feel bad on top of feeling horrible is not helping it. Um, so I said this was going to be shorter and it's going to be shorter. Like it, love it, hate it. Subscribe. I would really like a subscription um, for various reasons, such as I I would like to have the resources. And yes, I do monetize my YouTube videos, but I would I want to I want those resources to be able to funnel them back into skepticism, analytical thinking, building bridges, education. Um, okay, like it, love it, hate it, share it, subscribe. Bam. Bat tent, no mosquitoes, Zika virus, blah, blah, blah.